We've been talking all week about the Twitter files. You know, Elon Musk opened up the internal executive and mid- middle management correspondence there at Twitter, gave us a look-see into what went on and how they made the decisions to censor the Hunter Biden laptop story. But strangely, the FBI was barely mentioned in that whole discussion. Why? Why is that? Well, now we've learned. Jim Baker, who had worked at the FBI during the Russian collusion hoax, he then left and went straight to Twitter. And lo and behold, he actually ended up being the gatekeeper on all of that data before it was released last week. Now, Elon Musk has fired him, but there's a whole lot to uncover here about Jim Baker and how his fingers are in the pies of Russian collusion at the FBI and the Hunter Biden laptop censorship at Twitter. And there's one man who knows a lot about this, Cash Patel. He, of course, now is a children's book author. His book is The Plot Against the King, and you can get it at theplotagainstthekeng.com. But that book is really all about this Russian collusion hoax, Cash. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks so much for having me on your show, Larry. You uh, you had a really interesting position because you were Devin Nunes's uh, right-hand man there at the uh, House Intelligence Committee when you were uncovering the Russian collusion hoax. And then you ended up being President Trump's chief of staff at the Department of Defense at the ending part of the administration. So you know very well Jim Baker's involvement in a lot of this stuff. What can you share? Yeah, absolutely. Look, unfortunately, Jim Baker is another one of those characters that I have labeled a government gangster. Jim Baker orchestrated as the number one lawyer at the FBI for James Comey, the number one guy orchestrated with him the Russiagate hoax. That is, they allowed the DNC and Hillary campaign to funnel millions of dollars to outside sources by foreign bogus intel, get the FBI to go along with it, even though they knew it was false, lie to a federal court and unlawfully surveil a presidential candidate. Why is it so important that Jim Baker was the number one counsel? Because he signed off on the legality of it, he allowed the lying to the federal court, and he destroyed the integrity of the FBI. Fast forward, what happens when our Russiagate investigation leads to Jim Baker's firing that I led for Devin Nunes? He gets a golden parachute at Twitter. And now, of course, we are learning that he was running Twitter's gatekeeper comms and calling the balls and strikes on what to release. That's why I immediately called for Jim Baker's firing way before anybody did, because I said, how can you have this conflict of interest, this corrupt government gangster being the one who refused to have transparency during Russiagate allow you allow you, Elon Musk to have transparency now? There are some references in these emails that Matt Taibbi released last Friday with Jim Baker saying, listen, this this has the indications of being a Russian hack. He always used weaselly lawyer language so he could get out of it. But clearly his voice carried a lot of weight there at Twitter because he had just been the senior counsel for the FBI. So when Jim Baker says, yeah, this looks like it could be a Russian hack, obviously they're all going to do what he says. There's only one example you need. As the head lawyer at, or the number two lawyer at Twitter, James Baker provided the justification for Twitter, Vijaya Gatta and company, to say the Hunter Biden laptop was Russian disinformation, to censor and shut down the accounts of the New York Post, Post that broke that story. And all of this happened weeks before the presidential election, after yeah. meeting on a weekly basis with Jim Baker's old FBI and allowing the FBI to tell James Baker, hey, censor this stuff for us. We don't like the political opponent, so we want you to make it make it like you did in Russiagate. This is disinformation. But here's the thing, Cash. Two weeks ago, we interviewed the owner of that computer repair shop where Hunter mm-hmm. Biden left the laptop. He turned it over to the FBI. So the FBI knew this wasn't Russian hacked materials. The FBI knew that this was evidence in an investigation into Hunter Biden. So if James Baker worked at the FBI and then worked at Twitter and the Hunter Biden laptop story came up, wouldn't he have known that it was in fact legitimate? He would have not only have known it, he did the same play and operation he did during Russiagate because now he's like, I'm in the private sector. Nothing is going to happen to me. He never thought he would get fired at FBI, but he did. But now he's we got him fired twice. And that's because the corruption has caught up with him. I mean, literally, you have the same FBI and its corrupt cabal communicating with outside Twitter, violating the First Amendment and freedom of speech just because of politics. So James Baker is the tip of the iceberg, though, Larry. People are like screaming victory that Elon fired him. No, it's a one yard rush. You got 99 more to go. Release all the documents, all the emails, all the comms with the FBI and just wait till you see how deep this hornet's nest is. What if he is deleted 
files uh, before he left? What if what if he's actually scrubbed uh, any any reference to him or any reference to someone from the FBI uh, entangled in all of this? You want to hear something wild? Good. I hope he did delete it because the House of Repo- the House of Representatives has a Republican majority. You know what they can do? Issue subpoenas on one January for every FBI and DOJ communication with everyone at Twitter, including James Baker and Vijay Agad. And you know what the FBI and DOJ never do because of their arrogance? Delete documentation. It's how we caught them in Russia Gate. We put out their own 302s, their own investigative reports, and their own contact papers. And so I want the Judiciary Committee and the House of Representatives to subpoena this material. And then we'll find out if James Baker deleted anything, as Elon Musk put out the other day, that that's what he was afraid of. To that, I say, good. I hope he did. We can catch him. It, at this stage of this story, if he had deleted anything from Twitter, would that be considered obstruction of justice? Would that be considered uh, destruction of evidence? Uh, or, or is there not really an ongoing investigation so he's free to do that? Well, no, there are uh, many of the Republicans have already called for and have been calling for months into an investigation into Twitter for violating the First Amendment, which is a crime. So that would be impeding a federal investigation. Whether this DOJ will prosecute it is a whole nother story because they seem to side anything that is uh, Russian collusion uh, green lighting. We also know not just through Mark Zuckerberg's comments on the Joe Rogan experience, but we also know from a federal elections commission investigation into the Hunter Biden censorship that the CEO of Twitter testified under oath in a written statement that the FBI had been briefing them on nearly a weekly basis in the months leading up to this date, specifically about a Russian hack and leak operation, specifically Mm -hmm. about Hunter Biden. So this very much is not necessarily a Silicon Valley and big tech story. This is an FBI story, Cash, isn't it? Yeah. And, and and on top of that mounting evidence you just laid out, FBI agent Chan testified in the Missouri attorney general's case regarding censorship at Twitter, where he explicitly said, as the FBI agent in charge, he went to Twitter and Facebook on a weekly basis, not just to say, hey, censor some stuff, but with specificity on Hunter Biden's laptop and other matters they highlighted. And do you know the rate at which Twitter and Facebook accepted their censorship request? 50%. That puts wow. you in the Hall of Fame in every major sports category we have. This is the yes. level of corruption we're talking about with the likes of big tech. And this is why we have so far to go. Well, and that's more than just Twitter violating the First Amendment. That's Twitter violating the First Amendment at the request of the government. Now, what do you say to people that said, hey, Trump was president when that was going on, so it has nothing to do with Biden? They act as though the Trump administration actually had some sort of oversight and control of the Justice Department. As you've seen, the uh, Justice Department and the FBI don't work for the executive batch, and they certainly didn't work for President Trump. Look, Attorney General Bill Barr and Chris Wray, who is the director of the FBI then and now, directly authorized the FBI agents to coordinate with Twitter and censor free speech. They have yep. a lot of answering to do. And for people who say, oh, well, Bill Barr was Trump's attorney general, well, he also had Hunter Biden's laptop for a year and a half and did nothing. When government leadership fails to act, You have to call them out on it and make them testify. And then we'll get to the answers of, you know, why did Trump pick these people? But just because you pick them doesn't they all did the right thing. Cash Patel, we only have a minute left, but it's Christmas time. People are doing shopping. I know you didn't really want to be a children's book author, (laughs) but you wrote the children's book, The Plot Against the King, because everyone had said, oh, Russian collusion. It's so confusing. No, you wrote about it in such a way that even a child can understand it. Right. Yep, Coda, thanks so much, Larry. PlotAgainstTheKing.com. For your show, we got a Christmas special box. Both of my books, Plot Against the King 1 on Russiagate and Plot Against the King 2000 Mules on Election Integrity. We've I've signed them all. You get a Communist Tears mug. Check it out. It's pretty cool. And you get a Christmas <laughs> ornament. All at a big discount today. PlotAgainstTheKing.com. I promise this is a Christmas box that will make Adam Schiff cry. Go to PlotAgainstTheKing.com. Get your discounted merch today and stuff those stockings with freedom, truth, and education because it matters. If you start selling pillows, you and I are done. No, no pillows, just books. All right, good. <laughs> but you. if you buy a thousand books and use them as a pillow at plotagainstthekeng.com, that's cool. <laughs> Cash Patel, cashing Thank in, you. I guess. But truly, this is an important children's book, and you should read it and give it to your liberal friends who have childlike minds. More to come on O'Connor tonight. Mm-hmm. 